has to happen for maybe your run game to kind of revive itself a bit? Consistency. You know, it, it's an interesting thing, and that's that's probably the biggest issue I see is where we're at consistently. You know, it, it's funny. You keep things in relative terms. And right now, you know, I think last week we may have averaged 5.9 yards per carry. And you take out the three kneel downs and it goes up to 6.5. You take out the two sacks, it goes up to 7.5. But there's explosives. Mm -hmm. And what's happening and what we've talked about is that there have been those instances where a lot of times it's good defense and credit KU on that. And sometimes it's, it's not a great call into a particular pressure, whatever the case might be, and that's part of it. And then part of it, we got to do a better job of staying on and finishing. And so I think it's collective responsibility um, on, on my part, not only as one calling the plays, but uh, then it's on them for doing their job. And then it's on me of not saying, okay, hey, does this concept confuse with this concept? Hey, this, this call, we want to leave the ID right here, but then if they do this, then we got to push it. And is there too much confusion? Not allowing those guys to play fast. So that's, that's probably the biggest part of it. Um, you know, but relatively speaking right now, uh, you know, it's, it's keep things in perspective as well. Had some explosive runs every game. Mm -hmm. Is there sort of a, a effort to try and get him more touches as we end this? Yeah, there, there's and, and there's always a plan that we have for him. And sometimes, you know, you got to say, okay, well, you're putting him in. Well, we still have to go through a progression, and we may do our best as an offensive staff to design something to say, hey, it's going to go here, it's going to go there, and then a defensive look changes. Maybe a, something this changes, maybe that changes. Um, you know, one thing that we've recognized is everybody knows where he's at on the field when he's on the football field. So um, every week you've got to try to find ways to get him the ball, but the other guy's pretty good as well. And, uh, um, you know, this past week we did, uh, as you guys could see, we did have a couple more design quarterback runs in some situations. And, um, you know, um, that's real as well. So, uh, Part of it is, yeah, we do need to find the way to get the ball a little bit more. You got this point fifth in defense. What mm -hmm. makes them so good? You know, number one, you look at their coaching staff and their head coach. And um, their head coach, obviously, we competed against here in 2022. I can go back to when I was coaching football at Nebraska Omaha, Division II ranks, and he was at Central Missouri. And one thing that has not changed in 20 years is guys who are physical guys who are well coached and guys who run to the football. So you look at them from a scope of a record no different than last week's opponent. And that's right now what the Big 12 is. And you can sit there and say, golly, you know, you look at this defense and KU, our last opponent, got after him. Well, you know, I think there might have been, was there four or five turnovers in that particular game? that helped them and, and credit KU, they made some great plays, but you look at their front seven, they're thick, they're active, they're well coached. Um, they run to the football, they get off blocks and, and they present significant challenges for an offense. Houston, their defensive line, I think under Fritz and then their defensive coordinator has run, I think a lot of the tight fronts that we've seen a little bit more in college football to take away the inside run. Mm -hmm. How does that sort of change your approach when you know a team? Yeah, th they do a good job of, of going into multiple fronts. They really do, and they'll stem in and out of those multiple fronts. And, and front or not front, you still need the players in order to play a particular front. And they've got the personnel and they've got the, um, the players and the schemes that do make it a little bit challenging. So, you know, we've, we've got a plan. Uh, just like every single week, you know, we'll have to adjust that plan against Colorado. We had to adjust a little bit of a plan, you know, against West Virginia. We had to adjust a little bit of our plan. And then obviously against KU there towards the latter part of it, um, there were some adjustments. There was some of those adjustments weren't executed extremely well. Um, and that falls directly on my shoulders. Uh, but I know that we're going to have to play a little bit of that game because there's too much respect I have for that coaching staff. Probably, probably, absolutely not, because we go one game at a time. But do you peek at the conference standings and say, we're probably going to win every game the rest of the way? No, no, I don't. And because, I, yeah, do I fall victim to humanity? Yeah. Yeah, I do. 
you know, I'm guilty, you know. Um, and then what the message is to those players is, as I tell them all the time, you know, a lot of time when I stand in front of them and, and tell them message of the, the number one person I'm talking to is me. And I can't, nor anyone in that locker room, control what happens here or what happens there or what we do three weeks from now. And what we have to do is control what is right in front of us. And, you know, when it becomes so coaches talk one play at a time, you hear everybody say that and one game at a time, and this is the most important. That's, that's really what you're talking about because when you start looking ahead or you start looking at something down the road, that's, that's when you're going to have a bump. And, um, you know, we've – these past three weeks and since our last uh, since our last bye game, you know, we've had some challenges. You know, there's, there's been some good football teams and record, no record. Those are three dang good football teams. And we had another dang good football team that we got to go play on the road. So it is all about controlling what we can control. And this week it's going to be, hey, we got to have a great Thursday today. And then we got to get a good night's rest. Um, you know, a good meal is the same thing I tell guys every every week. Get the hydration. The weather's going to be a little bit different than what it is here in Manhattan, Kansas. Uh, and then we got to come out tomorrow and, and have a great, great Friday, a great walkthrough and that whole part. And that's, I know that's, ah, uh, it's Coach BS. That, that's, that's the reality of it. It really is. Who would you say has emerged as a leader on your offensive line? You know, it's, it's still Taylor Poitier and, and, and Hadley Panzer. You know, those are kind of the two biggest leaders that we've had. Um, you know, I think Taylor's really, and I mentioned him because he's really becoming more and more vocal. And I think that his his play is backing that up, you know. And and uh, um, Hadley's always been that leader. He's going out there. He's busting his rear end. You know, Hadley came out of that West Virginia game, you know. And and my plan going into the Kansas game was was you know, and you saw Andrew Lyngan going for a series there in the first half. And I was planning on getting Hadley probably a couple other series off. And you know, he kind of. He kind of told me, he goes, I'm not coming out of this game. And for a Kansas kid, um, that goes a long way. So those are the guys to me that are a lot of the leaders.